Hello my friends and welcome back to Indam Rembe. Remember this is the port of cultural store. Uh, guys, today's video has a sponsor whom I want to introduce to you uh, just from onset before we jump into today's video. And this sponsor is actually you. You. Uh, you. Uh, who normally sets aside your valuable time to watch uh drop comments likes and even go ahead to share the videos from this channel so wherever you are feel much appreciated it is actually from such effort that has enabled this uh, channel reach this height so my request uh, please just maintain uh, the same team spirit as we move forward so team spirit Hoye, hoye, hoye. So guys, let's move to today's video. And uh, uh, let, me, let me start by actually requesting you to grab uh, your virtual walking shoes because again, we are on the road. We are on the road to explore Langata. This is Langata Exploration Part 2 and we are heading to a burial site. We are heading to the Cemetery and this is Langata Cemetery. This is the biggest cemetery in this city of Nairobi. Remember we have uh, other cemeteries. We have Kibra Cemetery for Nubians. We have uh, Kariako and then we have City Park. We also have uh, a cremation facility in Kariako. But uh, the biggest one is uh, Langata Cemetery. Langata Cemetery is Babayao. Baba Yao, that is a street, <laughs> a street language, so yeah, street Swahili. Uh, that means uh, this is the, the biggest, this is the greatest. And uh, uh, let's just uh, look at a very, very brief history of this cemetery before we move on uh, to the site. So, Langata Cemetery opened its door back in 1958 1958 uh, by the year 1996 this facility was declared full uh, the facility reached its capacity in 1996 remember uh, the facility sits on a 100 and acre land uh, acre piece of land 120 acres piece of land that is huge uh, but it took only 38 years to fill it uh, this may be as a result of uh, various uh, issues or various reasons uh, one of them being that uh, uh, the facility doesn't serve only Nairobians it extends its service to the uh, the environs of Nairobi so some people or neighboring counties uh, are allowed to ferry their loved ones and bury them in Nagata the facility is also open to the foreigners uh, remember uh, in Kenya Hakuna Matata and we always welcome everybody uh, by bad luck um, maybe our visitors may receive their final call here and uh, it is actually expensive to transport uh, corpse so in in case that uh, the family members doesn't have enough uh, resource to facilitate the transportation of the, uh, their loved ones back to their motherlands uh, they can just decide to bury them here in Langata Cemetery. So because of that, uh, this facility got filled up after 38 years. Uh, the charges, uh, but before we move to the charges, let's look at the uh, divisions or sections. In this facility, we have two sections. We have permanent and we have temporary for permanent uh, permanent section you you have to pay a little bit more 
it costs around uh, 40,000 uh, to bury an adult in permanent section uh, around that uh, around 28,000 for children and then uh, around uh, 10 or 12,000 for infant uh, those uh, bodies that are normally ferried from outside of Nairobi pays more and same happens to the foreigners okay uh, we have uh, marked graves and we have unmarked graves unmarked graves are graves that uh, have got no uh, tombstones and such graves normally disappears uh, faster uh, we also have those uh, graves that belongs to the category of unclaimed. Uh, you know, uh, the law allows the government to bury uh, the corpse that have uh, overstayed in the morgue. Uh, these are uh, bodies or uh, uh, corpses that normally uh, brings about uh, the issue of unclaimed graves so this facility uh, got filled up in 1996 and remember from 1996 to date uh, it still receives bodies so that uh, actually raises a, a question about uh, recycling if indeed it is happening because recycling is uh, something that people would uh, hear about it last <laughs> Uh, recycling means that uh, uh, you are going to lose the graves of uh, your loved ones and because of that people doesn't want to hear anything to go with recycling so guys let's move to the site and see how situation is like so ladies and gentlemen welcome to the whispers of eternity welcome guys to our second exploration of Langata constituency of Nairobi and uh, let me show you where we are and this is a uh, Ngong Road Langata link this road is called Ngong Road Langata link uh, this is our second exploration if you remember we had uh, uh, visited uh, Wilson Airport and National Park both are found within Langata constituency so today we are on our way to the burying site called Langata Cemetery uh, the largest cemetery uh, within the city of Nairobi and this is the way you can approach uh, the side from uh, by various roads we have Langata Road if you are coming from uh, town center we have uh, same same Langata uh, in case you are coming from Karen and then Bagadi if you are coming Bagadi Road if you are coming uh, is it Bagadi Road really? Ongata Rongai this road from Ongata Rongai if you're coming from that direction so today tunatembelea ulimwengu wa wafu okay and this burying site uh, uh, is not uh, a welcome thing to every community here in Kenya we have those communities because of their cultural belief they don't bury uh, their loved ones uh, in that site uh, for example the uh, value of people uh, where you are you, you are you are truly come from uh, this is the the community that produced you as truly so we are uh, the value of people we don't bury our loved one uh, outside if I say outside I mean away from home so uh, the Luya people 
uh, that normally receive the last call here in this city or elsewhere far away from home they are normally ferried back home and buried within the home compound or uh, an area uh, an ancestral designated burial site so the Lua people don't bury their loved one outside reason being uh, the Luya people believe that uh, when you are burying outside uh, your home area, your homestead, it is like you are thrown. Uh, you have not been accorded uh, the last respect according to the customs uh, laid down by our ancestors. So for Luya people, we don't bury our loved one uh, in this site especially an adult for kids uh, kids sometimes are buried uh, but then there is a ritual that has to be performed the moment you bury a kid here you have to take the soil from the grave uh, the soil from the grave and uh, then go uh, make uh, it's like a makeshift grave back at home a makeshift, a makeshift grave is normally made at home to symbolize the grave of that uh, uh, lost child. Those are the Avalua people. And it is not only the Luya people. We have uh, many communities, especially those uh, who come uh, from western region of Kenya. Many, many communities from western part of Kenya don't bury their loved one outside. Okay. The Luya people also believe that uh, the dead uh, doesn't completely die. They believe even though they are no longer uh, in this normal world, they have ability uh, to still interact uh, with the living so because of that they came up with a proverb say a proverb that says ufuire alolanga the dead sees mfu huona motakufi Amonaka, if you are coming from the DRC, <laughs> Motakufi Amonaka. So, because of that, uh, you can't bury the Tuya outside. And uh, again, there is uh, one thing that I wanted to share with you about the death of the Luya people. When a Luya people dies away, away from home and the body is transported back home the body doesn't they believe the body doesn't move with the, the spirit of that person uh, the spirit normally remains behind and uh, arrangement shall be made after burial after the tears has dried after the dust has settled an arrangement shall be made for the performance of a ritual uh, that is normally performed to come uh, or to visit the place where the person died at and uh, the spirit of the dead is normally arrested and uh, taken back home. We call that ritual Sinini. Sinini. Uh, the Babukusu people, you know, uh, because of the differences in uh, sub-tribes of the Luya people, uh, we have uh, others with a different name of this ritual, and the Babukusu people uh, normally call it Olotia. If you remember, when the former vice president, the late Amalo Kijana, died in London, uh, later on, uh, the brother, who is Eugene Amalwa, uh, had to arrange 
uh, for this ritual with some elders to go uh, in London and bring back uh, the soul, the, the spirit of the late brother. Okay, this is a shopping center, Langata shopping center, and that uh, those are red roofed building. That is Langata High School. Langata High. So that is uh, the Luya people. And in the event that uh, a Luya member of family disappears and maybe by bad luck dies uh, in that uh, are disappearing uh, you know nobody knows uh, where this person died at it is hard uh, for family members to relocate uh, this uh, person who disappeared and eventually died but for the Luya people, it is very easy, very, very simple. Uh, if a Luya disappears and dies, uh, uh, they normally uh, visit the living in dreams and uh, shows them exactly the place they died at. Okay? Are we together? Uh, the dead just appear in a dream to one of the family member. It is normally only one uh, appears in dreams and uh, tells them that I am at this place. Please come for me. So what normally happens here? The moment you receive such dream. You just have to wake up early in the morning without talking to anybody and visit the site that uh, this person showed you in the dream. Uh, if you do so, you will get the body of uh, uh, this family member. And in case this person receives the dream and uh, breaks the news to other family members, uh, if this person goes to that site, uh, they won't get the diseased. The moment you receive the dream, you have to keep it as secret as possible. And you just wake up very early in the morning and head direct to that particular place uh, that uh, the deceased showed you in the dream. And uh, uh, then you will uh, get the body and arrange uh, on it is transportation back home so this uh, 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 gets me to the incident, incident of uh, this uh, Malaysian aeroplane MH370 uh, Boeing 777-200 uh, Air uh, the Malaysian airport that dis disappeared uh, while en route uh, to China uh, this plane disappeared in 2014, never to be seen, never to be uh, recovered until to date. However, in 2015, a flapron was discovered on the shore of Indian Ocean uh, in Reunion. And this was a clear confirmation that indeed the plane had, had crashed uh, into the southern part of Indian Ocean. So this plane hasn't been discovered and it has also raised some questions about the uh, tracking of uh, uh, tracking in aviation. So it is actually bad luck that uh, we had no uh, a lawyer, uh, person among, the, among those uh, 239 who are on board. If uh, by good luck we had a lawyer, a person in this plane, the plane uh, could have been recovered. I can tell you this for free. The plane could have been recovered because that uh, lawyer person would have sent 
uh, the message would, would have appeared in dreams to one of the family members indicating exactly that uh, place uh, uh, they are. So the story of MH370 uh, Boeing uh, 777-200 ER. Remember, this is the biggest. Uh, this is the biggest uh, passenger twin uh, aeroplane. The biggest passenger twin aeroplane. So it is size. Uh, you can't believe that uh, uh, as huge as it is. It can just disappear that way uh, with modern technology that we have. In terms of tracking, it disappeared completely. A very sad story. So guys, we are still on the way uh, to Ulimwengu Wawafu. The world of the diseased. Uh, this is uh, this is not a place that uh, you can just visit and feel the same way because the people uh, we're gonna interact with are the people who have already left this world and joined the second world. Uh, here is an aeroplane. is going to land at Wilson Airport. Wilson Airport from here is like 800 meters. Let's go on. So I was uh, uh, talking on how to handle yourself while uh, at this uh, in this particular site uh, because we are dealing with the people who have already left us and uh, you have to uh, conduct yourself in a good way you have to conduct yourself with the decorum so that you don't annoy the dead we believe the dead sees and everything that uh, you does there they always witness this is langata my neo yajalas my neo yajalas ah yalas yalango <laughs> Jalas Jalango. I don't know why this name keeps on metamorphosing. It keeps on metamorphosing. You are given a nickname, and then uh, that nickname is still <laughs> twisted from Jalango to Jalas. Maybe next. Uh, the name shall be Ja. ja. Mm -hmm. uh, ja, ja. We are almost there, so Musichoke. Musichoke Hataki Dogo. Tuna Karibia. Tuna Karibia, we are just. Uh, like 14 15 minutes in the journey it's almost a choke to my kind and that tree is a uh, uh, lutea lutea mahamia lutea mahamia is a hardwood tree that never sheds the leaves it has a white, a white wood. If the house is well touched, 
uh, that uh, timbers or woods from Mahamia can last a century without rotting. So Mahamia Lutea is actually one of the best indigenous trees that we have uh, here in Kenya. So guys, that is the site, that is uh, uh, the place we are visiting, but we have to enter via main gate. So let's rotate uh, to where main gate is uh, located. And that is a shortcut, we can as well follow it, but uh, let's just go straight but we can exit at any other point. Another plane. Another plane. Ndege. Ndege. Aeroplane. Ndege is aeroplane in Swahili. Uh, same word, Ndege. I uh, could be used to mean a bird. A bird. Is it a bird or a bird? <laughs> uh, uh, either of the two. Side. Uh, these are uh, riders are using road wrong side of the road. Uh, that tells you how impunity people can be, especially on the road. Actually, uh, in Kenya, I've come to discover we have two things that uh, we don't know how to use them. Another plane. And uh, there is a billboard that treats Nairobi City Council, Office of the Governor Lagata Sub County, Mini Ward, MCA Ward, administra Administrator. Is it Administration Office or Administrator's Office? So that is, uh, this is the, main, the uh, exit, uh, let's rotate and use uh, the entry. Two things that Kenyans don't know how to use, or two things that Kenyans normally misuse, one is road, two is public toilets, another one is here, wrong side of the road. Uh, that is what uh, we called as a grassroots impunity. Grassroots impunity. Uh, those guys are digging one of the graves. Uh, we actually have workers uh, who does work within the cemetery and uh, they also go to strike. Uh, when they feel like they, uh, their rights are being abused or mistreated on the uh, line of duty. They also strike and they cause <laughs> chaos within, the, in fact they lock. gone. 
Uh, these guys normally demonstrate and cause chaos here. They even lock this facility and uh, nothing goes on when these guys are, are on strike. They even end up burning uh, tires here. <laughs> uh, you can imagine if uh, uh, these guys strike, how the situation would be like. Very disturbing. You want to bury your loved one, but uh, no way you can do it because of strike. Mm -hmm. This is avocado. It has like three, three fruits, three fruits there. Uh, this one is not yet matured. It hasn't matured enough to be harvested. So guys, this is now Langata Road from town. Uh, remember I told you earlier on that you can access this uh, facility via this road, especially if you are coming from town, CBD. Another plane. Let, let me not over focus on it because uh, uh, the wall you are seeing on the right is a military camp and if uh, a military camp is uh, a restricted area so if they see me with, uh, holding a camera facing them I could get into trouble So guys this is the facility this is Langata Cemetery. And uh, we have lots of our brothers from uh, DRC who are laid to rest here. Waheri, uh, we have like uh, over 50, over 50 of uh, Congolese or Zairian, uh, Zairian brothers uh, who are laid uh, to rest here in this facility, uh, especially the musicians, you know the cost of uh, transporting a corpse from uh, Nairobi to Kinshasa is like uh, a million or so uh, therefore it is uh, somehow difficult uh, for some people to afford uh, especially uh, these uh, musicians who don't earn that much that can enable them uh, to facilitate transportation of their loved ones back home so they end up uh, just burying uh, their loved one here uh, we have, uh, uh, the list is long actually, they are over 50 or over 60, they are about. Uh, we have uh, uh, this guy, this place is cool. Uh, we had this uh, a guy by the name uh, Koyongonda. Koyongonda was uh, with the, uh, General Defau, uh, General Defau's band, uh, Orchestra Big Star. Uh, if you remember this uh, General Defau, uh, General Defau is the guy who came up with the proverb Otokite Okozwa Mosolote. Otokite Okozwa Mosolote. Uh, the proverb simply means you don't sweat, you don't earn. No sweating, no earning. Otokite. Okozwa Mosolote. So we had uh, uh, Koyo, Koyongonda. Koyongonda uh, was with this band, Big Star of uh, General Defoe. 
Je, le général du fond. I like how Madilu normally pronounces that uh, name. Le général du fond. So, uh, Koyangonda, I was uh, laid rest here. Koyangonda also uh, played in, uh, in, in this uh, band called Rumba Japan. Koyangonda, Azali Awa. Uh, Bakunda ki ebembe nae awa na cemetery ya langata na kati ya na hobi. Ah, uh, there is another musician, a dancer, uh, by the name, I don't know if it was a nickname, he was uh, known as Gau Gau. Gau Gau is also resting here. Uh, may his soul rest in peace. Uh, that is Gau Gau. Then we, we had a par bebe. A par bebe. Uh, that word, that name is like a par, <laughs> the luo, written in the same way as the luo word a par for ten. It's normally written a par. A par bebe, a par bebe of Bilenge Muzika was also laid to rest here. Uh, may his soul rest in peace. A par bebe of Bilenge Muzika. Bilenge is youth. Bilenge is youth. Vijana, Vilenge in uh, Lingala is youth. Vijana. Uh, we also uh, had another musician uh, called Vie Mombasa. Uh, Vie Mombasa was with the orchestra Virunga. Orchestra Virunga associated with uh, one samba, Omar Mapangala. Uh, the guy who gave us the song Kenya Ingi Yangu, if you remember that song, uh, a very very nice uh, song uh, that had uh, uh, a, a guitarist uh, by the name uh, Daliki Moko. Uh, guitar is Angali Kwanza uh, playing a solo guitar in that uh, song. Kenya Inji Yango. So guys, this is the entry. That is the entry. Uh, but we are not entering just yet. Uh, let me show you something uh, like 50 meters away and then we come and enter. So VM Mombasa of uh, Orchestra Virunga is also resting here. May his soul rest in peace. And then we have uh, uh, Feroz, this guy uh, who used to be, uh, to be, uh, to, who, who was known as Feroz of Chakatumba, Orchestra Chakatumba. Feroz, Feroz is uh, uh, resting here. Uh, we had uh, Bejos, I don't know if it, it is Bejo or Bejos. Uh, Bejos of same, same Virunga of uh, Omar Mapangala. Uh, Bejo is uh, uh, also resting here. Uh, may Bejo's soul uh, rest in peace. Uh, then we have Dino Kayeye. Uh, Dino Kayeye Poizu, po, po, Pozua. Dino Kayeye Pozua a.k.a. Saute Kubua. Uh, Pozua. <laughs> Pozua is also I am laughing at the name Pozwa. Pozwa is poison. Pozwa is poison. <laughs> Someone was known, known as poison sumu. Ooh, Odilo. It was not Dino actually. Odilo. Odilo Kayeye. Odilo Kayeye Pozwa aka South Kubwa. South Kubwa uh, is resting here. May his soul rest in peace. Uh, we, we have a uh, uh, Gina Mongaza. Uh, Gina Mongaza is also here. So Gina Mongaza may his soul rest in eternal peace. And then we have uh, Baba Gasto, 
of Orchestra Gaston, uh, Orchestra Baba National. This is the guy uh, who came from Tanzania back in 1975, lived in Kenya until uh, his demise in 1997. Uh, Baba Gaston gave us the biggest, the biggest uh, Christmas uh, song in Africa. The biggest uh, Christmas song in Africa. You can uh, look at the, you can search and listen to the song. It is called Kakolele. Kakolele, oh Kakolele. Viva Christmas, viva Christmas. Noeli Christmas. Ah, if you know that song, if you doesn't know it, you can just search it and listen to it. A very beautiful name, the biggest Christmas uh, song ever produced in this black continent. It was by Baba Gaston of Baba National. Baba Gaston uh, was laid to rest here uh, back in 1997. Ah, uh, then we have. Lovi Longomba. Lovi Longomba. Lovi Longomba. Longomba is like a, a household name in Africa. Uh, do we have a country that doesn't know uh, this name? So guys, this is what I wanted to show you. Well, also going to land at, uh, uh, this is what I wanted to show you, this is uh, Langata Cemetery, Muslim section. So, as you can see, uh, we are divided, let me zoom and you see there is a mosque over there. Over there there is a mosque. As we, <laughs> you can see, uh, we are divided even in dates. So now let's... Uh, go inside the cemetery. So Lovi Longomba was the son to the legend Vicky Longomba, uh, who was uh, at a time with uh, uh, OK jazz of uh, uh, Le Grand Maitre Luambo Luanzo Machia de Franco as a vocalist. So we have uh, Mulamba Jose, also known as Mujos, uh, because of uh, Republic Authenticity of Mobutu, Mobutu uh, Seseseko, uh, an, an initiative which forced people to drop any European things, including names, clothes, and what have you, to adopt the African one. So this guy was called Mulamba Joseph, but because of Republic Authenticity, uh, he was forced to change Joseph into Mujos. Mujos. Francois was uh, forced to change to Fra uh, Francis. Uh, Francois was changed to Franco. Uh, Joseph changed to Joski or Josex, as he was known to, uh, among his peers. Many, many of them uh, actually changed. Uh, <laughs> changed, dropped their uh, Christian. Uh, names. So Lovi Longomba is the uh, son to Vicky Longomba and Lovi Longomba has a brother uh, this guy of Tecno Sukus, uh, Will Longomba. Even though uh, some people say that uh, Willow is a half brother to Lovi, uh, that means they share a mother but not father. They share one mother, different father. Okay, so Lovi Longomba, uh, Lovi Longomba was uh, uh, with Orchestra Lovi, but before that he was with uh, Orchestra Mazembe. Mazembe means bulldozer, a uh, bulldozer. So Lovi Longomba, Lovi Longomba is lying here, is resting here. Uh, may his soul rest in peace. And uh, Lovi Longomba 
Actually, lo vilo ngomba and uh, mama mama zai mama 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 zaina mama zaina uh, actually the name was Zainab but uh, it was shortened as mama zaina uh, I believe mama zaina and uh, Lovi are both lying here and then uh, Lovi has got two sons Christian and uh, Christian and Lovi uh, if you remember the Longombas, the duo of Christian and Lovi were here in Nairobi some times back. Uh, they produced several songs, including Vuta Pums. Uh, another one was Sri uh, Dondosa, something like that. Vuta Pums and uh, that Dondosa. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, they moved on. To the US, I think they followed in the footsteps of uh, Samba Omar Mapangala. Samba Omar Mapangala also lived here before moving to the US. Uh, Longombas also uh, moved to the US. Uh, unfortunately, one of the brother died, that is Christian, and uh, he was buried in the US. So it is a kind of unfortunate thing to this uh, great family, uh, this uh, musical great family. Uh, because uh, their grandfather, Vicky Longomba, was buried in Zaire. Uh, their father and mother were buried in Kenya. And now one of the brothers has been buried in the United States. So same family uh, have been buried in three different countries. Uh, that is Longombas. And then we have uh, Moreno Batamba. Moreno Batamba of uh, Umojawan Band. Moreno Batamba is a household name here in Kenya. Uh, I have several songs rather, uh, like Naomba Tuachane, a very hit song. Naomba Tuachane, Mimi Nawewe, Nimesha Vumilia Yakutosha. If you know that song, uh, it was by this great uh, guy, Moreno Batamba. Uh, Marino Batamba also gave us the song uh, Nimechoka Nawewe You can also search and uh, listen to his music uh, He gave us very very nice uh, music music with a message uh, music that uh, uh, normally uh, music that are normally said to be uh, the music that stands at the test of time so that uh, Moreno Batamba Moreno Batamba is lying here. May his soul actually rest in eternal peace. I'm trying to remember uh, these names as much as I can. Uh, we also had uh, another another musician by the name Kalenganzanze Vivi. Uh, not a Vivi Amboy. Not a Vivi Amboy. Vivi Amboy that you, you all know. <laughs> this is not a Vivi Amboy that normally confuses uh, Fini TV. <laughs> uh, Fini, Fini TV. So this one, uh, this guy was called. Uh, I, I'm trying to uh, to finish up with this musician before I enter because I don't know if I will be allowed to uh, film inside the cemetery. So I have to complete uh, with this musician before we enter. So, uh, Kalenga, Kalenga Vivi, uh, Kalenga, Kalenga Nzanzi Vivi, Kalenga Nzanzi Vivi was with the orchestra Mangalepa, if you remember the song, Embakasi, Mama, Embakasi Mina Enda, Oh Mama, Nati Zamazu Tini, Oh Mora, Benzi Wangu, Ame Bakiro, Pendo Pepe Okay. If you know that song uh, by the name, uh, a title Embakazi, Embakazi was composed by uh, Kalenga, uh, Kalenga Zanze Vivi uh, with uh, that was orchestra, uh, orchestra Mangalepa. Uh, the song was a dedication to one lady called Susan Mora. And Susan Mora was a manager at uh, Garden Square Restaurant, owned by Armstrong Kasuku. 
these are um, this Susan I think because of uh, uh, good treatment uh, these guys of Mangalepa head at uh, uh, this particular restaurant uh, is the reason as to why they decided to compose at least uh, this song as a sign of appreciation uh, to whatever uh, they received while uh, living at this particular uh, restaurant but uh, from my observation you know uh, I have come uh, to follow in the footstep of uh, Priscilla updating TV. You know, if you do something, Priscilla will just observe you keenly and uh, eventually Priscilla will tell you, no, here you are lying. <laughs> uh, what you are giving us is just uh, an eclipse to cover. Uh, there is something else happening behind the, ca the, uh, the, the curtain. That is Priscilla of updating TV. Uh, you can also visit her channel. Uh, the channel is called Priscilla Updating TV. And Priscilla does lots of updating on this channel, including updating herself. So visit her channel and uh, you will come to appreciate me later. That is Priscilla Updating TV. And I here tend to follow in her footsteps. Uh, because when uh, Kalinga Nzanzi uh, produced uh, this song, it was said, that is just appreciation to the manager, Susan Mora. But if you listen keenly uh, to this song, you will notice that there is something else. It is not just an appreciation <laughs> appreciation uh, for the good deeds. Listen to the song, uh, you will also, and you can as well be the judge. To me, I say there was something else. There, there was uh, something else going on between uh, these two. <laughs> Guys, Penzi wangu ame baki pendo pevwe. No way, no way. You can just sing uh, that uh, Penzi wangu ame baki pen pendo pevwe, and then you say that it is just an appreciation. Hapa kuri kwa nachaziada between <laughs> between Kalen Gansanzi Vivi and Susan Mora, the manager of Garden uh, Restaurant. You know, back in the days, Garden Restaurant was like today's uh, carnival restaurant. And after this song, actually, um, Orchestra Mazembe, is it Orchestra Mazembe also came up with another song uh, praising the owner himself, Armstrong Kazuku, the owner of uh, uh, this uh, uh, restaurant. Uh, if you remember this song, Kajituliza kwake kasukwe Hataki maneno Hataki maneno Aomba mungu wa msaidi Daima milele Kasukwe You can as well search for the song Kajituliza kwake kasuku And listen to it It is also a very nice song uh, by the way, this is one guy that uh, I was heard people confirming that he's satisfied with the little uh, he normally gets. Anacho pata kina mutosha, hey, 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 hatake maneno, hatake maneno. That what he earns is actually enough. He doesn't want any issues with anybody. This is one guy that I, I've heard of him being satisfied. <laughs> that is Kazuku, uh, Armstrong Kazuku, the owner of uh, Garden Square. Uh, guys, we also so uh, who is that? Uh, Kalinga Nzanzi Vivi. Kalinga Nzanzi Vivi is here. May his soul rest in peace. Uh, we also have another another musician called Atia Joe. Atia Joe was a bass guitarist with, the, uh, with uh, Super Mazembe, Orchestra Super Mazembe. Atia Joe is here. May his, his soul rest in peace. Uh, then finally, guys, uh, we have uh, Long Adidos. Long Adidos of uh, Super Mazembe. Long Adidos is the guy who popularized the song Shauriako. Shauriako eh, shauriako Shauriako, wende lote mina wangu Siweze kuwa moto baba, zambi kwa mungo baba eh Siweze kuwa moto baba, 
Zande kwa mungo baba we So uh, uh, Longwa Didos Longwa Didos is here May his soul uh, Rest in Eternal peace So guys I believe I have uh, uh, Finished uh, But uh, uh, Apart from Shauriako Longwa Didos also uh, Gave us A uh, Another funny song uh, by the title Mbanda ya Mobange. Mbanda ya Mobange. An old co wife. An old co wife. Uh, the first wife is complaining that the husband married the second wife who is older than her. So, guys, if you uh, get the second wife, ensure that uh, you go for the young blood. You go for what uh, what is normally referred to as uh, nyama soft. Nyama soft kama maini hivi. You don't go for the uh, these uh, tough meats that are biting. Uh, it becomes a problem. You may even end up losing your teeth. So that is the message in Banda ya Mobange. Mbandaya Mobange, an old co-wife. Mobali Nakai as well in Kai Mbandaya Mobange. My husband has acquired an old co-wife. Co and guys, uh, remember Shauriako, uh, this guy, uh, Kaling and Zanzi VV, only popular, popularized this song. The song was originally written by one guy called Ngwashin Timbo with uh, TP OK Jazz of Luambo Luanzo Makia Di Franco. So guys, let's now enter the park. The reason we are going here is uh, to see the condition, how things are, and many other things that we shall encounter. So this is the gate. And welcome to the whisper. I don't understand uh, what just happened. My camera went off the moment I reached the gate. So we are inside. And uh, this is the permanent section. We have permanent section and we have temporary section of this cemetery. So this is a permanent section. Permanent section you pay more. Uh, the other reason as to why we the Luya people don't bury our loved one here is because uh, burying your loved one here you have to follow the, the laid down uh, procedures of uh, uh, burying here. You can't come here with your cultural uh, whatever. So if you look at the bodies they are all facing one side and for us the Luya people we use cardinal points uh, among the Luya people originally we had two cardinal points that was uh, north and south so you either be buried facing north not 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 actually uh, north and south sorry it is not north and south the original cardinal points of the Luya people are east and west Evukwe and Mumbo so you are either buried facing east or west and uh, because of that uh, with the Luya people finds it difficult to be buried here because as you can see uh, the, the graves face faces the same direction unless uh, uh, unless decided otherwise, but uh, the graves faces the same direction. Same, same direction. Okay. But uh, the facility, I don't know, uh, because the graves belongs to those uh, guys, uh, they are not uh, weeded, as you can see. Uh, we just have uh, weeds 
are growing on the graves. Okay. This is Langata Cemetery. And uh, it is already full. It is already full. However, barring continues. Now that actually raises some questions. That raises some questions. You can imagine something that was declared full 28 years ago. And it is still uh, being used up to today. That one raises lots of questions. Kasi mi na kwenda u moyo Nanti zama juu chini moro Ngai na kei Wala ya pakazi suzana Kasi ya na kwenda Kasi ya na kwenda it is a motima. Mana in the cave, Susanna. This one hasn't been plastered. That is now considered to be temporary one. People just move, stepping on the graves. Uh, if you see a grave like this one, it means that. Uh, uh, one family member has already been buried, but the, the other space is already booked. Maybe a husband and a wife. So it is uh, like uh, the wife died and they preserved the other side uh, where the husband shall be buried. Guys, over down there, there is a uh, I believe it is a how do you call it a burial service like something like that a burial service being conducted okay. uh, here we also have another temporary grave these are all graves that people just step on they cross. Oh, study Kutembe Aju, Kaburi. And that in Gumu Kuhepa, it is really hard. Uh, 
and this is uh, this section is also temporary. This is this this section. Those bumps are graves. I'm looking for the Maasai. Wanga lady, I'm looking for the Maasai. Hapa kuna kinyezi kembamba. Hapa kuna kinyezi chembamba kama cha uno. Those are pigeons. Uh, someone is rearing pigeons here by the roadside. 
And it is like this is a garage. <laughs> yeah. uh, people are really daring. So guys, that is all I wanted to share uh, in this particular video. You can as well uh, share your side of the story uh, if you do bury your loved ones in the cemetery. And uh, if you doesn't, uh, please share your side of the story. What are some of the reasons as to why you don't bury your loved one in the cemetery? So uh, let's just keep this conversation going in the comment section. And uh, I want to thank you uh, so much for watching up to this particular point. Uh, please now just give this video a like uh, or a thumbs up. Uh, hey, agriculture. I have an agriculture. We have sorghum, maize. Cassava, we have onion, uh, we have beans, and other vegetables, the other vegetables, huh? look at these are uh, kales, green collards. Uh, these are very tall. These are uh, uh, what the Gikuyu normally calls uh, Dokoma Shamuhadu. Dokoma Shamuhadu. Dokoma Shamuhadu. The Gikuyu calls uh, Sukuma Dokoma. Ah, Dokoma. Ah, Dokoma. Ha, ha. Quindida. Ah, Dokoma. Ah, Dokoma. Ha, ha. <laughs> so, guys. Uh, bye for now but uh, I hope to see you in the next video Kwaherini Mubaki Salama Salmini